India in 1961 was a nation newly freed from the shackles of colonialism. It was a time of great hope and even greater challenges. The nation was determined to chart its own course. This included building a strong defense industrial base. India dreamed of designing and manufacturing its own fighter jets. This dream would soon take shape in the form of the Hal Marut, India's first indigenous fighter aircraft. The Marut project represented the aspirations of a newly independent nation. It was a bold statement of India's intent to stand tall in the world. The Hal Marut project was launched in the late 1950s. It was a time when the Cold War was at its peak. India, under the leadership of Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, adopted a policy of non-alignment. However, the country still faced security threats from both the East and the West. It was clear that India needed to develop a strong air force to defend its airspace. The Marut project was a key part of this effort. The name Marut means spirit of the storm in Sanskrit. This was a fitting name for an aircraft that was meant to be a symbol of India's growing might. The Marut project was a testament to the vision and determination of the Indian government. It was also a reflection of the skills and ingenuity of Indian engineers and scientists. They were determined to prove that India had the capability to design and build world-class aircraft. The Marut project was not without its challenges. India was still a developing country in the 1960s. It lacked the industrial infrastructure and technological know-how of the more developed nations. However, the Indian government was determined to make the project a success. They invested heavily in the project and brought in foreign experts to help with the design and development of the aircraft. At the heart of the Marut story lies a fascinating international collaboration. Germany, recovering from its own post-war struggles, found a willing partner in India. Leading this partnership was a figure who would become synonymous with the Marut Kurt Tank. Kurt Tank My name is Kurt Tank. I came to India in 1956, bringing with me a wealth of experience and a design concept that would evolve into the HF-24, the precursor to the Marut. My vision was ambitious, to create a supersonic fighter jet that could match the best in the world. This was a challenging goal, especially considering the limitations India faced at the time. Under Tank's guidance, a dedicated team of Indian engineers and technicians worked tirelessly to bring the HF-24 to life. The project was based at Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in Bangalore, which would become the cradle of Indian military aviation. The collaboration between Tank and his Indian counterparts was a testament to the power of shared goals and cross-cultural understanding. The development of the HF-24, however, was not without its hurdles. One of the most significant challenges was the procurement of a suitable engine. Tank's initial design called for a powerful engine that could propel the aircraft to supersonic speeds. However, securing such an engine proved to be a major stumbling block entangled in the complex web of international politics. The search for a suitable engine for the HF-24 became a microcosm of the geopolitical realities of the Cold War era. India, committed to its policy of non-alignment, found itself caught between the competing interests of the Western and Eastern blocs. Each side was eager to court India's favor and saw the Marut project as an opportunity to exert their influence. The United States, while initially receptive to providing engines, eventually grew wary of arming a nation that refused to explicitly align with the West. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, saw an opportunity to draw India into its sphere of influence. However, their offered engines were often deemed unsuitable for the HF-24's design requirements. This left India in a precarious position. The lack of a powerful engine hampered the Marut's ability to achieve its full potential. The aircraft, designed for supersonic flight, was forced to operate at subsonic speeds. This limitation would have significant implications for the Marut's operational capabilities and its ability to compete with contemporary fighter jets from other nations. The engine saga highlights the challenges faced by developing countries seeking to establish self-reliance in defense technology. 
It underscores the influence of geopolitics on technological advancement and the difficult choices nations must make in a multipolar world. Despite these setbacks, India remained determined to see the Marut project through, even if it meant compromising on certain aspects of its performance. Despite the challenges in procuring a suitable engine, the development of the HF-24 continued apace. Indian engineers and technicians working alongside Kurt Tank overcame numerous technical hurdles to bring the aircraft to life. Finally, on June 17, 1961, the Halma route, as the HF-24 was officially christened, took to the skies for the first time. The Marut's maiden flight was a moment of immense pride for India. It marked a significant milestone in the country's journey towards self-reliance in defense technology. Newspapers hailed the event as a triumph of Indian engineering. The Marut, despite its engine limitations, was a symbol of India's growing industrial capabilities and its determination to chart its own course in the world. The Marut's design was sleek and modern for its time. It featured a delta wing configuration, which was at the cutting edge of aviation technology. The aircraft was also equipped with a sophisticated avionics suite and an ejection seat for pilot safety. Despite being designed for supersonic flight, the Marut's subsonic performance was still respectable. It could achieve a top speed of around 1,112 km per hour or 691 miles per hour. The Marut was designed to be a multi-role fighter capable of performing both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. It was equipped with four 30mm cannons for close-range combat and could carry a variety of bombs and rockets for ground attack missions. The Marut's versatility made it a valuable asset for the Indian Air Force, which was eager to deploy the aircraft in a variety of roles. The Hal Marut, despite not achieving the supersonic dream envisioned by Kurt Tank, possessed several notable design features and capabilities. Its aerodynamic layout, characterized by a tailless delta wing configuration, was advanced for its time. This design provided the Marut with excellent maneuverability at subsonic speeds, making it a formidable opponent in dogfights. The Marut's armament was another aspect that underscored its intended role as a capable fighter. Equipped with four 30mm cannons internally, the aircraft packed a significant punch for close-range engagements. Furthermore, its ability to carry a variety of external stores, including bombs, rockets, and even air-to-air -air missiles, highlighted its versatility in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat scenarios. Powering the Marut were two Orpheus 703 turbojet engines, manufactured under license from the British firm Bristol Siddeley. While these engines provided adequate thrust for subsonic flight, they fell short of the power required for the Marut to achieve supersonic speeds. This limitation would remain a defining factor in the aircraft's operational history. Despite its engine constraints, the Marut boasted a respectable combat radius and service ceiling. Its maximum takeoff weight of over 10 tons allowed it to carry a substantial payload, making it suitable for a variety of missions. The Marut's design, while limited by the engine technology available at the time, showcased the ingenuity of Indian engineers working within the constraints they faced.